Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for three of our dies. These are dies number 1124, 1125, and 1126, our pattern plates, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. These three pattern plates are all A2 sized, so that means four and a quarter by five and a half. I'll start first with the swirls pattern plate. Now this one has a lot of big open areas and die cutting machines love dies like that. So as long as you go through at a little bit of an angle, that would be my recommendation so that you get more even pressure with the rollers, you should be able to die cut the swirls design probably in just a single pass. So this design is going to go edge to edge on an A2 sized card. So that's exactly four and a quarter by five and a half. But you can also cut it into smaller little swirl areas to use it piecemeal. Now the tiles pattern plate is a lot more intricate than the swirls, and so it may require two passes. But if you go through at an angle, sort of depending on how thick your cardstock is, depending on how tight the rollers are in your particular machine, you may be able to get it in a single pass. Now this was pretty thin cardstock, only 65 pound, and the die actually just came off of the paper because of course it's brand new. But luckily it seems to have cut everywhere in a single pass. Otherwise I could have just set the die back down over the top of the pattern again, kind of wiggled it until it's seated down in there and then run it back through. But this seems to have done a really good job. And a great way to empty out all of that confetti is to use a Spellbinders tool in one. So it has a wire brush end and then it has a pokey tool end with a couple different tips. Anyway, you can combine those to really clear out the pattern plate pretty easily. And we do sell those tool in one tools now on our website as well. Just like the swirls, the tiles pattern plate measures four and a quarter by five and a half, but it is repeatable. So you can cut more of them and line them up and have the pattern get as big as you like. The tiles pattern plate also looks really nice when you layer it. So you just take two colors, layer them right over the top of each other, and then slightly offset the top one just a bit in some direction, you know, upwards, downwards, diagonally, and then you'll get that cool little layered shadow effect. Okay, the third pattern plate is the flowers design. Now this one is definitely the most intricate and it has an outside border. So those two things combined are going to require a few passes if you are not using a precision based plate or a metal shim. But if you're just using a regular old die cutting machine like I am, run it through on the diagonal and then right back through again. So give it a double pass to start. Okay, leaving the paper in the die, flip it over and just take a look at it. It will be evident which areas didn't get all the way through. They'll just be a little cloudy like this. Everything that's nice and sharp has been cut through. So what you want now is a partial shim. A lot of times people want to shim the whole die when it doesn't cut all the way through, but all you're doing is just increasing the same pressure everywhere. What you really want is an extra piece of paper over just the areas that didn't cut. So I decided just to flip it over because that's giving it different pressure as well. But what I did is I just put that little scrap of paper over the areas that didn't cut. And then that probably will not cut all the way through both layers. So if I can just get in there with a tool and get that started, I can just take off my shim and throw it away. So that was just about getting extra pressure in that area. But now you can see that it has done its job and everywhere has been cut through. Two of the corners have a poke hole that will actually get the pattern plate out of the die. So then just carefully peel that out of the die and then if there's any leftover paper still in it, you can just poke that out with a pokey tool or with that wire brush. Then I also like to use that tool-in-one wire brush to empty out all of the confetti out of the die. Now if you really want to be able to cut that flowers pattern plate in a single pass, you'll probably have to use a metal shim or a precision base plate, but do check with your machine's manufacturer to find out which of those accessories are available and acceptable to use in your machine. Just like with the tiles pattern plate, the flowers pattern plate also looks nice when you layer it. So you put two different colors over the top of each other, then slightly offset one, and then you'll get that cool shadowed effect. But with the flowers pattern plate, there's another effect you can do, which is to flip the top one around. And then what you'll see is you have the pattern alternating differently between the top and the bottom pattern plates, and then you get that double flower effect. This was such a quick and easy card front with just rainbow colored strips of cardstock, one single flowers pattern plate, and a few matching rhinestones with a greeting. And then I matched that styling inside on the sides of the card and then used the new paper frames pop up with some partial pattern plate cuts to decorate. The flowers pattern plate also lends itself really well to being chopped up into kind of individual little designs. So what's happening here is a black pattern plate is put on the front of the card then the white one is actually cut into individual little flowers and then layered over the top. 
And then inside this card is our flower pot pop-up die set. The tiles pattern plate is, looks really nice too when you just chop it into borders. So you can see that used here on this card. But then another thing you can do is glue it tone on tone to the same color cardstock and then die cut that cardstock. Say with the labels and things, it's going to look like you have an embossed texture. Another way to get an embossed look with the pattern plates is actually to cut the pattern plate out of a thicker cardstock. So that's a 100 pound cardstock. And now I'm going to treat that cutout as though it were a die. So I've placed it on my platform, then my paper over the top, then my squishy mat, then my purple embossing mat. So that's the sandwich for embossing a die in a Spellbinders Platinum 6. You can definitely check online for the sandwich for your machine. So that's going to give an emboss of that pattern onto that piece of cardstock. And you could either leave that tone on tone or you could highlight it with a little ink. So you could highlight that with sponges, with brushes, with a brayer, or in my case, I'm just using a small ink pad and brushing it right over the top. I was thinking this could be an underwater type of background and then I kind of like the extra streaks of ink. Or another option is to use the cutout as a stencil. So let me just line up that cutout right over the top of that one I've been working on. And then I'm just going to use some temporary tape in a corner to keep it from moving. And then I'm just going to pounce it with an ink right down over the stencil. So there really are a lot of ways that you can use the pattern plates beyond just die cutting them for backgrounds. The pattern plates work well for inlaid techniques. So for that type of technique, you would want to try and keep all the confetti that comes out of the inside of the pattern plate, in this case, the tiles one. My favorite glue is the Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website and I've cut an A2 sized card and then one of the tiles pattern plates to completely cover that. Okay, so now I just fill in some glue into an area that I want to inlay. And then I'm using a quick stick tool, which is really helpful for picking up those small pieces and transferring them. We do sell those quick stick tools on our website as well. And there really is a lot of variation in how many of those tiles I might fill in for contrast. Maybe I'm just going to make a nice simple pattern like this, or maybe I'm going to keep going and make it look more tiled by filling in some of the areas around those little designs. Here is an inlaid version of the swirls pattern plate with seven different colors. Now there are plenty of leftover pieces to be able to do this effect again. This time I've got my paper left in the die. So that paper is gray this time. And then I'm going to transfer that onto another piece of the gray cardstock. And I'm just trying to figure out about how big the background is so that I can completely cover that area with a tape runner. Now I can turn that die over the papers in the die and just kind of line it up loosely with my pen marks and then it will transfer the paper out of the die and onto that sticky cardstock. And then since all of those background areas are sticky, I can just start picking up the pieces from the seven different colors and placing them in to fill up the background. Now the swirls pattern doesn't cut a border around the outside, so on the outside I'm just letting those pieces hang over and then I'll trim those down later. Okay, so I could clean up the edges using my trimmer, but instead I'm going to use our largest crosshatch rectangles die. So that adds that cool crosshatch detailing around the perimeter. So using the negative pieces to inlay a couple backgrounds, and then I also still have my seven positive space backgrounds as well. You can also emboss the pattern plates themselves. So for that, you would just make the sandwich in your machine as though you were embossing a die instead of cutting it. So for a Spellbinders Platinum 6, that's the die blade side up right on the platform, paper over the top, then the tan squishy mat, and then the purple embossing pad, and then I roll that through. And actually either side looks nice, so you could do either side up with that embossed texture. Now I could leave that tone on tone, or I could highlight that with some ink. So I'm just using a brush and some ink to add some color to that embossed surface. That's the front side. And then I can do the same thing on the back side and they do look quite a bit different. Another effect you can do with that flowers pattern plate would be to overlay a die cut version over the top of the embossed version. And if you flip the sides, then you get that double layered flower effect and that works on either side. You can just look at the two and decide which one you like best. 
And for the embossed one, it just sort of depends on what inks you use and whether you squirt it with water or whether you're gonna spray it. So just lots of different ways to get different effects by mixing in a die cut overlay over the top of an embossed one. We talked about stenciling, this one pretty clean with ink and this one a little bit grungier using sprays. In inlaying, of course, which is a great technique, there really are just so many different ways to use the pattern plates, but they work excellent just to fill in the fronts of the cards when you're making those pop-up cards, or of course you can do all sorts of other techniques with them. And we are having so much fun with the pattern plates, I am sure there are going to be future designs as well. But for now, you can find the swirls, tiles, and flowers pattern plate on our website, karenberniston.com, as well as a lot of your favorite online and local retailers. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.